Well said, Tom. Thank you. Before, before I open the hearing for the Barnstable Conservation Commission, I would like to ask George to do a roll call for the quorum purpose. Abadili is absent tonight. Foster. Present. Gilmore, present. Hearn. Present. Lee. Present. Sam Poole. I do not see Peter. Uh, and Tangney. Present. We uh, have, a, oh, excuse me, Administrator Darcy Carley. Present. And staff member Kim Cavanaugh. Present. Uh, we have a quorum, Mr. Chairman, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Acting under the provisions of Mad General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and or Chapter 237 of the Code of Town of Barnstable, the Barnstable Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, at 6.30 p.m. for the applications of Orlando Wildlife Trust, our land trust, Eden Law Friends, Friendships, Lloyd DeFore. The hearing is being recorded and broadcast on the Town of Barnstable's government access channel. The plans and application are on file and may be rebuilt by scheduling appointments by sending email requests to Darcy Curley at 230 South Street, Hyannis. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast on the Town of Barnstable's government access channel. In accordance with the Mad General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20, please let the chair know if anyone is recording this meeting. Hearing none, this evening's hearing agenda is posted on the town's website. On the agenda, next to each application is the amount owned to the town of Barnstable for the cause of advertisement. Please send your checks to the Conservation Division at 230 South Street before the hearing. Remote participations. The Conservation Commission's public hearing will be held by remote participation as a result of an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed by the governor on March 29, 2023, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Remote public access to this hearing shall be provided in the following manner. One, the hearing will be televised via Xfinity Channel 8 or High Definition Channel 1072, it may also be accessed via Town of Barnstable's government's access channel. Two, the real-time public comments can be addressed to the Conservation Commission utilizing the Zoom link 845-318-50955 or use the toll-free phone number 888-475-4499 as on the agenda. Third, the public can also email the comments to Curley at town.barnstable.ma.us at least eight hours prior to the hearing. Tonight, under the old new business, is we have proposed that uh, conservation restrictions, commissions review and voted whether to approve or as written or edit the following. One is the 71 Virgil Road, Sandyville, 105, uh, 1.05 acres off Lumber Mill Road, Arjul Road, Located in Sandville Village, Barnstable access, uh, Assessors Map 147, Puzzle, zero, uh, puzzle 079. The second puzzle is 111 Prince Avenue, Marston's Mill, 2.57 acres. Located in Marston's Mill Village, Barnstable Assessors Map 076, Puzzle 036. The third puzzle is 230 Old Colony Road, Hyannis. 2.11 acres located in the village of Hyannis, Barnstable, Assessor's Maps 325, Puzzle 33. Oh. Janet is with us from BLT, and she will do the, oh, do the honor of doing the presentations. And um, just for your information, I was part of the uh, land acquisition at the time, and this three CR has been sitting on that list. And it's over in so many years, and it's nice to see this coming to the end. And that's why, you know, Lindsay's come here and trying to make sure that we did our job. Janet. Um, it, Mr. Chairman, if I may, before Janet goes, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, Peter is with us now, so we'll log him in at 634. Thank you very much. I was taking care of my mother's insulin worries. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Janet, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Tom. I'm Janet Milkman, Executive Director of the Barnstable Land Trust, and I um, twisted Lindsay's arm to be on here with me tonight, too, just because um, when these three 
projects um, were actually purchased by the town. I was not in my current role, so I was not part of that. But I'm really happy to be here to um, ask for your approval of the conservation restrictions, which Barnstable Land Trust will hold on these three parcels. Um, <clears throat> they've been important for the town for a number of different reasons, and I'll go through them fairly briefly since I know you have um, copies of the CRs and uh, also the the write-up, but I'm going to share my screen just for um, purposes of reminding you where they are. So the first one is 71 Harju Road, and that is um, uh, just really completing the um, conservation of the Lumbert Mill Conservation Area um, it was, I think, originally intended as potentially a parking area um, and canoe launch or kayak launch, but um, the parking area is um, was put in right off Lumbert Mill, Lumbert Mill Road. Um, so the parking is no longer necessary and no longer in the CR, um, but still represents a really important um, completion of the conservation of that really significant area. Um, it's all biomap rare species um, meets that criteria for the state uh, biomap and um, is very important for that reason as well as just, um, as I said, filling in the last puzzle piece for this conservation area. Lindsay, did I miss anything? No, that about wraps it up, Janet. Thank you. Any questions on this one before I move on? Uh, what are the rare species that are there? Oh, okay. That is a good question. Lindsay, do you know? Not off the top of my head. No, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know either, and I'm happy to share that with you. Go back and share that with the with you all. Um, tomorrow if you'd like. Uh, that's okay. Thanks for asking. Sorry not to be prepared with that information. Any other questions? One of the uh, things that was that was mentioned in here is the um, eastern box turtle. And it's a state listed species or so it's a special concern in this area. And this is also a protection of public water supply within the zone two of the wellhead protection area. Thank you, Eastern Box Turtle. That's it. Good. Okay. The next um, project is 111 Prince Ave, which is um, two and a half acres of upland pine oak in marston's mills and that was intended um both to protect uh, a conservation a, a high conservation value land but also to provide parking additional parking for the prince cove marina and um, uh, there's a drawing on the exhibit at the end of the cr for that um, so, and it is, as you can see, um, adjacent to the, a really significant amount of conservation land, um, owned by, mostly by Barnstable Land Trust, um, <clears throat> and, um, protecting the Marston's Mills River and the, uh, Prince and Warren Cove area. And the thing to add, Lindsay? No, other than in addition to the parking area, there would really need to be a sidewalk constructed if that's ever developed. So that's an important factor here, given that curve on Prince Ave. So this is a long range re reservation of that. Um, so it would really have to be uh, closely looked at and uh, the uh, parking area be gravel. Uh, there were a couple of options plans on that but uh it would take some uh some real looking at that to see how that sidewalk would go in because it's really too dangerous to uh, have people uh 
walking back and forth on the roadway. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions on this? Okay, moving on to the final one. Um, this is Old Colony Road, also known as Amaral. Um, two, just a little over two acres of wetland and upland habitat, um, abutting an existing 6.4 acre town conservation area and potentially allowing for public access to Snows Creek um, for passive recreation, including a kayak launching of kayaks and canoes. Um, about half of the property is freshwater marsh um, and is in the biomap critical natu natural landscape turn foraging habitat area. So again, this is just adding on to an existing conservation area owned by the town um, and um, ensuring that that can be um, used for passive re recreation or restored. It's pretty full of Phragmites now. Um, so again, that's a that's one that would have to be, there'd have to be some work done in order to make it usable. Anything from you, Lindsay? Yes, that that's very much true on the frag in there. It's really uh, would have to be controlled. It's almost all the way up to the street now. Um, but there is a small level area, and um, uh, you could access that creek in there. Uh, no parking at this site, though. Uh, you, you'd have to park down the street uh, and take the sidewalk up. The other reason for the acquisition as well was uh, the notion of being able to get on there and clean the culvert that runs on the old colony uh, drive there to the uh, wetland that runs to the west, if you see that large area. Um, as it was, you'd have to go down a steep bank otherwise. So this could be used for that uh, as well. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, that's it, right, Janet? That's it. Yep. We're really happy to finally be getting these um, <laughs> through their last hoop hurdle. The other things, too, is the uh, our town attorney, Kate Colony has reviewed the CRs and she's okay with that moving forward. And so with that, could I have a motion to approve those these three conservation restrictions and written and authorize the chair to prepare a support letter to the town council president? So moved. Second. Roll call. Tangy. Aye. Sampo. Aye. Lee. Aye. Hearn. Aye. No more aye, Foster. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Yep. Have a good evening. Have good a, night. We have two RDA. The first one is Orenda Wildlife Land Trust, selective tree cutting and vegetations and grass removal, as well as limited planting of native grasses and shrubs in an effort to maintain and expand nesting locations for the northern diamond per, diamondback turban at 210 and 194 <laughs> meadow lane west barnstable as soon on the assessor's map 158 parcel 005 slash slash 001 and 005 slash 002 um is greta with us yeah hello um hello <laughs> welcome <laughs> thank you um, yeah, so my name is Greta Nelson. I'm the land steward for Renda Wildlife Land Trust. I want to thank the commissioners for having us today. I'm also here with Lisa Nagel, who is a board member for Renda and the director of our Diamondback Terrapin um, nesting program. Um, so I'm happy to share my screen to share with you some of the project details. Um, thank you. Can everyone see this map? Yes. Okay, great. So the purpose of this project, um, uh, like 
Tom said is to expand and maintain nesting habitat for the northern diamondback terrapin. This location um, is at the very end of Meadow Lane at West Barnstable. It's primarily um, a level upland. Um, it's within the Sandy Neck and Great Marsh ACEC. It's also partially within the um, parody um, parity habitat. Um, it's also um, almost entirely within the flood zone, although this project, we don't intend to affect, um, do any grading or um, sort of affect the um, the flood zone <laughs> in terms of um, topography. So um, our proposed project is to do selective tree cutting um, we're hoping to, the, this meadow has been reforested over the years and it's been historically um, an important nesting site for the diamondback terrapin, um, but it's 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 being reforested. And so the, the larger trees are shading out the nesting habitat. And through our nesting program, we've seen um, the numbers, areas that used to be um, nested in no longer being nested in because of that reforestation. And there's also a CR on this property that has an intent of keeping the meadow open for that purpose. Um, so we're hoping to cut down a number of small trees, primarily scrub oak and scrub pine and a couple of small cedars um, to kind of keep this habitat open. And you'll see here that um, part of that area extends approximately to the 75 foot wetland boundary. Um, I will also note that we've had a really um, successful nesting program thanks to Lisa and a number of volunteers. Um, and with the site fidelity um, tendencies of the Diamondback Terrapin, meaning that they nest in the same location every year, um, we expect to have significant numbers returning in the next five to 10 years, um, which means we need to be getting prepared um, for, their, for their return now. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions or um, author, offer further um, information from the package. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there and leave it for questions. Thank you, Greta. Um, before I, before I um, have a question for the commissioner, Darcy, do you have any comment on this project? Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, just that the staff supports this. Um, we did uh, believe that it was okay to come in as an RDA. As Greta pointed out, there's only a very small area that falls within conservation jurisdiction, and they already had contacted Natural Heritage Endangered Species and will be following um, their conditions. So uh, staff uh, um, thinks this is a great project. Thank you, Darcy. Peter? Yes, uh, Ms. Nelson, can you please enlighten the commission here on the success of diamondback terrapins in the great marsh both on the north side and as we are bringing here nesting on the south side there's been a i think a, a dramatic improvement over the years thank you there there has thank you peter um i'm not as familiar with what's going on on the north side but i know sandy knack has had um a pretty great rebound um, and I believe they're no longer doing nest protection because they don't feel it's necessary. They have had such high success rates in the past year or two. Um, so that's really wonderful to hear. Um, as for on the south side where Arunda is doing this work, um, our 2023 nesting season we saw an estimated over 315 hatchlings were released just from our small site. Um, which is really impressive. We have volunteers going out twice a day, um, morning and evening, um, during the nesting season to locate the nests and protect them. And then during the hatchling season to um, sort of make sure that the hatchlings are um, coming out of the nest and reaching um, the edge of the wetland, as well as um, excavating those nests. We have a permit um, through the state to do this, as well as excavating those nests and estimating the number of hatchlings that come out with the egg shards that are in the nest. So we had, um, I think in 2022, we only had seven protected nests. In 2023, we had 37 protected nests. Um, and so based on those egg shards and the number of live, live hatchlings we saw, we saw an increase um, to 315 potential hatchlings that had been released. So it's really promising um, for the entire um, 
population, both north and south side. Um, and I think important that we continue doing doing this work. Well, thank you very much. Bill? I have <clears throat> I have no problem with this project, but I'm just curious. How do how do trees interfere with the terrapin? You want to take down these little trees. And I'm wondering, well, what is it? Is it shade? They don't like shade, or is it that they're physically blocking the movements? I mean, what 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 are the trees doing that sure. you know, I don't get it. So um the the tree cover affects the the soil. So they like to nest in sandier soil. Um, and it also, the shade affects the temperature. And so if you have more, they prefer sunnier places because the the sun creates a warmer nesting habitat. Yeah, and so temperature it. also affects um, the sex of the animal. Um, and Lisa knows a little bit more about this if you want more about the biology. <laughs> but um, we're noticing that um, that the shadier sites are no longer being used, whereas they used to be used. Um, and this is also confirmed by other folks in the region that are that are doing this work, that a, a sunnier nesting site is preferred. So Very good. Thank you. Right. That, that makes sense. Thank you. Good. Any other question from the commissioner? Seeing none. Channel 18, any public comment on this? Seeing none. None? Do I have a motion to approve this project as a negative determination? So moved. Second. Roll call. Foster. Aye. Uh, Sampu. <clears throat> Peter. 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 Where'd you go? I'll come back to him. Uh, Gilmore, aye. Hearn. Aye. Lee. Aye. Dagny. Aye. Peter, are you there? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Peter, you have to unmute yourself, Peter. He's working. Okay, I'm, I'm unmuted, but I have to go help my mom with her diabetes. I got okay. to leave. I just okay. had an important phone call. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Bye. Thank you. That's unanimous, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good luck. We'll mark it as... Peter being out of the meeting at 6.52. Okay. Good luck, Greta. Thank you all. Yep. The Thank next you. RDA is Illinois Frechette's proposed improvement in area of upper driveways to include adjacent adjusting road location, adjusting locations to within the property lines and resurface proposing turnaround mm -hmm. parking area with walkways, steps, steppers, and lend and landing at existing house door and to replace existing stairway to lower drive at 492 Elliott Road Sunnyview as so many assessors map 227 puzzle 122 John good evening John O'Day from Sullivan Engineering Consulting uh, also here in the meeting room this evening is the um, property owners uh, as well as um, Julie from Julia Garden Design, uh, as you mentioned, and while I bring up the plan, <clears throat> this property is located at 492 Elliott Road in Centerville. Uh, we have about a half an acre of land. The existing house was constructed around 1984. Um, we have wetlands kind of surrounding the property. There is a, a stream located to the south. There's a bordering vegetative wetland to it. Kind of further southwest, we have some areas of salt marsh. Um, our project is proposed is really on the landward side of the dwelling. We had, uh, were able to get together and have a meeting actually on site with staff before we even got into, um, you know, our doing plans or, or permitting of this to, to kind of walk through the resources and, and make sure we had a, a good game plan on what will hopefully be the type of filing required. Um, but if you had a chance to go there, uh, we put the witness stake kind of at the end of, of an existing paved driveway that leads towards this upper portion of the property. And the project as proposed is to try to create a little parking turnaround area at the end of that. Uh, we have the 100 foot buffer to the bordering vegetated wetland, as you can see, 
here is just sort of clipping that parking area. Uh, and again, landlord of the house and, you know, just sort of some walkways heading towards the front door, small landing just to, to get into this upper level, replacing some stairs on the other side of the, you know, along the driveway edge of it. Um, it's really, you know, as I said, kind of all landward of the dwelling, um, mostly just sort of around that 100 foot buffer marker. And, uh, you know, based on our, our meeting on site with the staff before we began this design permitting, um, we felt like this would be an appropriate uh, mechanism towards approval. And that'd be, we're all here to answer any questions you may have. John, do you mind to um, show the, your planting layout? It seems to be much easier to look at compared yep, to- Yeah, I, uh, I have the co their colored one here as well. Yeah, so that we're kind of showing what improvement and that sort yep. of- Yeah, like, and again, that 100 foot buffer kind of gets lost underneath, look, like it's lost a lot underneath their colors of it, but it was sort of clipping this, this back corner of a car in here. Right, right. Thank you, John. Question from the Bill. Yeah, uh, yeah, my mute. Yes. Um, yeah, this is a really minor project, and I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but I, I, ha I have a hard time understanding the difference between an RDA and an NOI. This, uh, your plans refer to a quo patio landing that's within the fifty to one hundred. And then you have all these lovely plantings, which are de facto mitigation, yet it's not really mitigation. It's not an NOI. And I'm just, how, how, how is it not an NOI? I guess I just, I'm looking to understand that. I'm not objecting to the project because it seems like there is some development. There is some hardscape. It is there. It's minor. And then you get all this planting. It seems, why, why is it an RDA? Because it, it, mostly, I will mostly defer that answer to Darcy. But uh, you know, I think that the the filing mechanism. I think you mostly hit it. Of it, it, it's all pretty minor work. The fact that they want they want to do plantings is between the owner and the landscaper. That was that was never even part of our discussions with, with the staff. We we were really there just talking about. Here's when we we're talking about a driveway and, and a walkway to the front door. The other stuff is is because they want to, not because of mitigation requirements, not because of that kept us from tripping some otherwise NOI yeah. threshold. Um, well, yeah, yeah help, help me understand that, Darcy. I mean, what is there some threshold? It's pretty minor. I mean, I, I'll give yeah, you Yeah, so we, we look at the guideline <clears throat> list uh, procedures that we use to decide which type of application. A lot of it is based on the square footage and where does that square footage fall between the the zero, the 50, the 50 or the 100. And, you know, we don't require mitigation for walkways. Um, so this just met the threshold as an RDA. The reason we had him do the engineering plan, too, was we wanted to make sure what our resources were. So it was something that we felt more comfortable with. He's putting it on an engineering plan, but there wasn't a lot that really needed um, extreme conditions or special. a lot of special conditions. It's something that we're comfortable with. So that's how staff judges it a lot, is, is this something that would have to have a lot of special conditions attached to it? But it is based on how much hardscape falls between the 50 and the 100 in this case. Yeah, there was something referred to as um, uh, patio slash landing. I don't think it's right on this screen, I but think it's right that that what we're referring yeah, to. Yeah, it's nothing. Like, just like a pet. Yeah, I mean it's like minor stuff, but it still was called. I say, well, you got a patio landing. Is that you know? So I'm just had a hard time with that, but I think it is really awful. minor. Yeah, I caught that on the on the legal description too on the agenda. <laughs> something said patty it was and I, I think that that maybe they tried to kind of narrow down our two or three sentence description to to as few words as possible but that that's the that's the extent of it thanks john bill same thing for angela too um um there is a guideline for filing regarding to the lda and the noi 
So the staff is looking at that three or four pages guidelines to determine whether a project can be filed under the LDA or has to go into the NOI. And sometimes when you, when we do the review on the projects before, in I mean in our in our agenda meeting, we also take a second look too. Is this the right filing or not? So that's what we come down to. So can we can we have a copy of that guideline? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll get if, it to if, you. Somebody could send uh, maybe Angela me because it just seemed a little. Yeah. on the edge but you know yeah i'd appreciate that too thank you uh sorry to interrupt so basically the elaborate plant list are not conditions of this correct they're just thrown in for us to see but they're not conditions of the project correct thank you <laughs> and also i just wanted to point out the guidelines that uh, we can send to you has a paragraph at the top that it's we're just trying to help the consultant or the or the um agent get an idea of what the commission might may feel comfortable with but it's always site specific so if the commission went out there and said oh no this we don't believe this is um the proper application we want you to go to a a full notice of intent you can you can do that but it's it just gives us a starting place um i came up with the guideline when i first became a conservation agent because i want I thought it was important that everybody we have so many we have like three staff members reviewing things and we wanted to be kind of be on all the same page. We didn't want to have one staff member saying, oh, that would be a need, needs and notice of intent. And then another person be, oh, I would have probably seen that as an RDA. So <laughs> it just it gives us a starting point. It gives something the consultant, and the engineer to work with. It, it saves time. But you are the ultimate one getting to vote on this and everybody understands because of that paragraph that it says site specific so so in the picture, <laughs> subjective so, yeah so one thing i just want to point out though in the past we have turned down some of the lda and asking them to file in you know, <clears throat> because of yeah. the scope of the work so yeah George? yeah i was just gonna say the same thing tom um we we always 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 take the recommendation of staff uh first but we have uh definitely sent rdas away and said come back and, and file notice no notice of intent any other question from the commissioner none Chen awakening any public comment on this seeing none could I have a motion to approve this project as a negative determination? So moved. Second. Anyone second? Second. Roll call. Uh, Foster. Aye. Dangney. Aye. Lee. Aye. Gilmore. Aye. Hearn. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that is unanimous. Thank you very Thank much, everybody. Good luck, John. Thank you. We have one NOI tonight. It's Lloyd the four proposed site improvement, including relocations of an existing shed, removal of an existing patio, constructions of two new patio, installation of a wash station, and reconfiguration of an existing driveway at three sixty one Ocean Street. Hyannis, as song and the assessor smith 325 puzzle 014 um brad yes good evening members of the commission brad holmes from ecr here on behalf of lloyd defar for his property at 361 ocean street <clears throat> be okay if i shared my screen yes please there there was a revised plan that sent out this afternoon and it was dated today's date march 19th The revised plan that came in today was a result of a conversation I had with Darcy. I think it was Thursday afternoon. Um, it was to clarify the uh, numbers, which I'll go over, and also to remove a 35-foot buffer zone. There haven't been any project changes, and I understand that if you uh, didn't have enough time, you know, we, we can discuss that. Um, this property at 361 Ocean Street contains a single-family home. Uh, a shell driveway, there's a shed with a small patio, 
Uh, it's surrounded by lawn area. There's another shell um, driveway at the front of the uh, property facing Ocean Street. There are several wetland resource areas that we have on and near the site. We have a, a salt marsh that we've delineated. Uh, there's the buffer 50 and uh, 100 foot buffer off the salt marsh. We have a coastal bank per the town of Barnstable regulations, which is this blue line here. Also, there's the 50 foot buffer zone off the top, top of the coastal bank and 100 foot buffer. We also have land subject to coastal storm flowage, which is the uh, FEMA elevation, which is elevation 11 that kind of surrounds the site. And if we didn't have enough, we needed an, an additional resource area. So we have Snows Creek, which is a, a tidal creek, and that's the mean high water location. And that, that brings us a 100 and 200 foot riverfront. So we're, we're fully within the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission. What we're proposing is fairly minor activities. I think the commission will be somewhat pleased with our proposal because it's a uh, results in a betterment for the property owner, but also environmental betterment. What we're proposing to do is to relocate the shed. The shed that sits here now with that patio will be fully removed. The new shed will be located further back and outside the 50 foot buffer to the salt marsh and outside the top of the coastal bank. That patio, as I said, would be also removed. We're proposing to construct two new patios, one in this location and one in this location. Uh, they would be pervious uh, to allow for the passage of, of uh, rainwater. The uh, existing driveway would be reduced, so it would be pulled back and uh, just improved in this location here just to replace and top coat it with a new layer of crushed shells. And we're also proposing a wash station, just a rinse station here at the uh, corner uh, at the house. When you look at the numbers, um, I kind of pull it side by side. We These are the numbers that are clarified with Darcy because I think they were just put together, uh, kind of broken down into too many uh Details. So we've, we've kind of lumped them together as structure and hardscaping within the 50 foot buffer zone and structure and hardscaping between the 50 and the 100. So if you look at the existing structures and hardscaping within the 0 to 50 at 552.66, we actually have a reduction in the project because we're moving the shed and the patio and moving things away from the, the resource areas. Um, there is a slight increase when we uh, look at the hardscape between the in structures between the 50 and the 100. Um, that's about 80 square feet of increase. And I didn't give you the number. That's about 596 square feet reduction between the 50 and zero, zero and 50 foot buffer. So by doing those reductions, it allows us to be in compliance with the Barnstable regulations, I believe. And this is also allows us to be in compliance with the riverfront uh, redevelopment regulations uh, because we are in the riverfront. Though we didn't need to, um, to comply with specific numbers, we have included a mitigation area. We're going to be taking that shed out and patio anyway. And this area lawn, we're proposing to revegetate it with um, native coastal salt tolerant plants. We're gonna use the Cape Cod cooperative extension list and and space out within that area. Uh, native plantings, we've put together a step-by-step -step task to, to grub the existing uh, turf out and revegetate that area. And then also in between, we'll use a, a native uh, wildflower seed mix. Um, I'll bring it back to the proposed conditions plan. So. I believe that we're, as I said, we're in compliance with both the riverfront redevelopment and the Barnstable uh, standards for work in the buffer zone. And with that, I'll bring it back to the commission if you have any questions. Any questions from the commissioner, Bill? I, I think it seems like a really good project. Um, I have only one concern. 
and that is the the plantings. I I, I like that you're doing plantings. Um, but that being said, I've I've been to some sites where the mitigation planting seemed kind of shriveled and not that. I don't know, not that impressive and a lot of dead plants and whatnot. I wondered, you've, you've got plans to put some of these um, these bushes, small trees and whatnot at, a, at every six feet on center. And I was thinking, well, if just one of those uh, plants dies, then you've got a big hole. And so one of my questions is, is concerning, you know, where is that? What's what? How is is that a standard six foot on center? Um is there a way of making it a little more de- uh, more dense plantings? Um, and then also irrigation. A lot of times you end up having some artificial irrigation for the plantings over the, for the first whatever year or something. And I wondered, you know, is there a plan for that? Or, or how do we ensure that the, this, I mean, boy, having that grow into a, a bushy area will be really great on that uh, bank. So I guess irrigation and density of plants are my two questions. Thank you. Sure. The DEP actually has a, a guidance in their wetland replacement guidelines for plant spacing, what we normally use, which is 8 to 10 feet on, on center for shrubs and 10 to 15 feet on center for saplings. Um, because we're going with a more sh- a lower shrubs, more uh towards the ground cover. Um, there's a variety of different heights here. I increased the density to from eight feet to six feet so that there'd be a, a, a better number of plantings. But we're also using uh, native uh, wildflower seed mix within the, the areas between the plants, between which would be uh, loamed and seeded. So with this um, being kind of a focal point, I'm sure that uh, any dead plants, we're not going to want to to, to look at it's going to be something that's going to be kind of merged into the landscape although native um will be held to what you know obviously whatever standards the conservation commission has for special conditions uh, if we get the planting done in the in the right timeline it would require minimal um irrigation and it's close enough to the to the back of the house where we can certainly have a hose and hand water if we get into some some dry periods uh, what, what other uh, Hope that answered I, your questions. I, if I, I have a little follow up, if I might. Yeah. Oh, let, just, just let me answer a couple of questions yeah, too. Address your questions too. One, couple of things. Number one, on our boilerplate, if there's any bad planting, the applicant has to replace them, replace those bad planting. Okay. And secondly, we allow under the mm-hmm. boilerplate, we allow for temporary irrigations until the until the planting is growing and, and proper broader with root and all so forth, then they can remove the irrigation, temporary irrigation systems. So well, one follow up, one follow up, if I might, and that is that, is there a way of um, keeping people from tromping through that, you know, down the bank uh, through that? Is there a, a temporary fence or something that might be put there? Uh, we didn't look at that. It's not really that steep. It's not, it's a, it's a more gentle bank that meets the Barnstable uh, regulations. Um, obviously, we we don't want to disturb what we're, we're trying to revegetate. Um, the commission feels that there should be some markers. We could look at that, but we weren't proposing any any sort of fencing. We, we would normally would require some demarcations and the types of the demarcations can be either stone or or grind this, um, you know, that you can, there's a number of selection that you can check with the staff on that one. So, Luis? Um, <clears throat> so, so the uh, driveways being reduced because you're putting uh, in, in place, you're replacing the end with um, the shed and the, Patio, is that is that correct? Uh, or, yes, basically, there's a very small portion of the existing driveway where the patio would go over, mm-hmm. um, the shed would go over the driveway, and the rest of it would be loamed and seated, so that the the new driveway is is here, and that generally over the existing driveway. 
I see. So basically, um, the two patios are the new hardscape that you're, um, I mean, just just to do the math simply, the two patios are um, really what you're mitigating for. Is that correct? Yeah, we, we've included more than we needed to when if, if we run the numbers for the Barnstable requirements. Um, there's actually a reduction of 596 square feet in the inner 50 foot buffer. When you take out this existing shed and this existing patio here, it gives us, you know, uh, a, 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 you know, a decent amount of removal in that area. So because we're going to be working in there, we thought it would be a good idea to over mitigate as, you know, to, to uh, go beyond what would normally be required because we have the ability to do that and, and uh, removal of turf is always a good thing. So um, that's what we came up with. Okay, thank you. George? Yeah, um, thanks, Tom. Um, I assume we require a three-year uh, monitoring? Yes. Okay. And, and um, I don't know, I, I think a, a demarcation would be a good idea, too. Yeah. Yeah. We need a revised plan showing the demarcations all around the uh, mitigation area. So uh, I can coordinate with Darcy on that. What a, lo a lot of the times what we like to do is use a cedar hole and then we put a wooden birdhouse on the top and then we put a conservation plaque on the birdhouse. So they have a little functionality to the conservation marker. Yeah, I can send you I can just send you what our um, guidelines are for the demarcation. Thank you. Very good. Brent, on the drawing, um, you were showing as an area right next to your mitigation planting area, remove invasive species. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yes. Sorry, I didn't uh, hit that. Right in this area, there's some uh, invasive non-native uh, shrubs in this area and vine. Um, that would be proposed to be cut and removed. Um, I think I may have put it into the narrative a little bit better detail, but that would be included in this mitigation area so that any non-native uh, invasives in that area would be flagged by a botanist and then cut at the base of the stem and removed. Do you want to, you know, to do this as an ongoing conditions for the invasive species removal maintenance for that? I think what we would do is after the monitoring is through what is required as a special condition at the time we request for a certificate of compliance, we'll, we'll include that depending on the success that we've had in the management. Okay. Um, excuse me. I'm sorry. Aussie. I just, just to uh, respond to that. It's best that you put in the special condition now because we can't add a special condition on the ongoing COC. So, um, I would just recommend that if that's something he's interested in, the commission should have the ongoing condition for invasive so they could use it. Okay. Does that also have to be um, a licensed? This is mechanical. I mean, by hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question from the commissioner? Chandler Wakeen, any public comment on this? Seeing none. None. Could I have a motion to approve this project subjects to the following? One, the receipt of a revised plan showing the demarcations around the mitigation area. And second, is an annual report of three years. And third, is the ongoing conditions for the invasive species uh, maintenance of that. So moved. Second. second. Roll call. Uh, Foster. Aye. Gilmore, aye. Hearn. Aye. Lee. Aye. Tangney. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck, Brett. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. We have two certificate of compliance. The first one is James Hanosh, BCC-0202. The second one is DT Property 
It's the second LLC SE3-5407. Could I have a motion to approve? Chair so moved. Second. Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gilmore, aye. Hearn. Aye. Lee. Aye. Dangney. Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. We have one set of minutes to march the 5th. Well, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we accept the minutes as submitted. Second. Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gilmore, aye. Hearn. Aye. Lee. Aye. Dangney. Aye. That's unanimous. Our next hearing is April the 2nd at 6.30, as Kim was reminding us in the beginning of the meeting that there will be 10 applications on that. That will be a long night on April the 2nd. <laughs> So moved. Second. Roll call. Foster. Aye. Gilmore, aye. Earn. Aye. Lee. Aye. Hangney. Aye. We are adjourned at 720.